A garden without flowers is just a garden, but a garden with flowers is a special garden. It just adds that little extra something, that colour, that it's just, the, I think it just adds a little bit of soul to the garden. Hi, I'm Saron and I live in Ms. West Wales and this is my garden. A couple of years ago, Hugh came along and videoed uh, me and my garden and this is a bit of an update just to see how things have progressed or changed over that time. I like growing flowers around my vegetables because I think it just adds interest. It encourages the pollinators and, oh, I've got a nice butterfly just there. It makes me feel happier to be in it and it provides cut flowers as well. I've got some helenium here and hollyhocks and some phlox and echinacea and campanula growing and sunflowers somewhere and poppies as well. A lot of things actually self-seed, so you might from one year to the next find things coming up where you hadn't planned on seeing them. This started out as a bed for five um, blueberry plants, which you now can't see because there's so much other stuff growing in here. But when I planted them last autumn, there was so much empty space. I thought I'll turn it into a bit of a polyculture bed. So I planted a few kale plants, calendula plants, and just a bit of this and a bit of that. But actually this year, a lot of stuff just kind of came up on its own, including, surprise, surprise, about three tomatillo plants, which I totally hadn't expected. I grew tomatillo plants in the polytunnel about two years ago, three years ago, and they produced so heavily, I hadn't planted them again but clearly some of the seeds ended up in the compost. And when I added the compost to this bed, they've come up and they're actually producing. So I'm really delighted about that. They're a very useful thing to have in Latin American cooking. I've got this one uh, raised bed here that's grown lots of different things over the last couple of years. And this year I thought I'd try some winter squash. Um, and I'm not going to collect the seeds from them, so I'm growing quite a variety of winter squash. Um, Hubbard squash, spaghetti squash, priest's hat, acorn squash. And I just love the way the leaves just kind of expand and take over the garden. I do have to train them a little bit because they're going to start climbing the bean trellis if I'm not careful. But I do love the depth, the height, and the just oomph that these plants just give when you put them anywhere that they're happy in. I think if I could only plant one, I would go for the Uchiki curry because they're manageable in size, they're very tasty, and they store quite well. For a bit of fun, I thought I'd try some sugar beets, a bed of sugar beets. I thought the idea was I could grow them partly to feed to the livestock, but I know they're edible for humans as well. You can make molasses out of the roots by grating them, soaking them and boiling them down to like a thick syrup. You can eat the leaves, they're a bit like, uh, well, like any beetroot leaves or Swiss char, they're very similar. Slightly sweeter, I think that sweetness kind of gets throughout the plant, not just the roots. And if they do well and the animals like it, I might plant a few more next year. I don't have menus each week. What I tend to do is I come out to the garden and I see what's coming ripe or ready to pick. And I kind of look through cookery books to give me ideas and inspiration for what I might make over the next couple of days. So it's very free flowing and I change and adapt recipes. I never really follow a straight recipe because I just find that sort of rigidity a little bit limiting. It's much more fun to kind of create. So recently I picked some of my climbing beans and I've got some purple ones, some yellow ones, and some of the borlotti beans, which are still in sort of a green bean form. 
and I cooked those till they were tender and I boiled up some beetroot and I made a salad with a really nice vinaigrette and put a whole load of fresh chopped herbs in that and it was absolutely delicious and I'm going to be doing that again and again because I've got a lot of beetroot and a lot of beans. This year like many years is a challenge with regards to the weather so we had a really cold winter which killed quite a lot of things that I thought would be okay like brassicas. Brussels sprouts died okay whoever thought a Brussels sprout could be killed by the cold but apparently they can and then we had a very cold cool dry spring so that made things very um, slow to kind of develop and then we had a very hot dry June and I had to water continuously because stuff just wasn't growing due to a, a drought sort of condition. And now we're having way too much rain. So we've had a little bit of everything. All the weather has been a challenge, but stuff is still growing at the end of the day. So I'm not overly worried. A couple of years ago, we planted a load of willow sticks along the width of our vegetable garden just to create a little hedge to um, stop the wind because we get quite a lot of exposed weather here. We're, we're open, we're in a field area and they've grown really well and they create a little bit of a microclimate now so we don't tend to feel the cold in here as much as we did a couple of years ago. Equally, we're making a dead hedge to surround the entire vegetable garden, partly to keep the chickens out and partly to create a, a little wildlife friendly hedge and also to have a use for the brash and branches that we create when we coppice our hazel and willow trees. Next year, I'd like to be able to be um, a little more sustainable with growing food for ourselves and our livestock. So maybe growing more things like kale, more of the sugar beet and things like more willow um, to create microclimates and forage for our goats. But we also want to keep on top of the ever-changing weather because that's always a challenge and I need to find vegetables that are very adaptable to drought and wet conditions. The polytunnel this year is a bit of everything. So I've got my tomatoes down the center and rather than just leave it as tomatoes, I've put other things like climbing beans and basil. And funnily enough, a lot of self-seeded parsley, fennel, calendula, other things have come up. Mint, funnily enough, coriander, it's all coming up and it was unexpected, but it's always a bonus. I've also got sweet corn and I've got sweet corn in here to stagger my harvest so I can get some, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And then the ones outside will be a couple of weeks later, so I won't have everything all at once. I've got a lot of brassicas in here and carrots. Again, just a bit of everything. So it extends my season on both ends, so I get an earlier start and a later finish. I love the creative process of gardening and I love being able to provide for myself and my family. It's just something that's always been hugely important to me. Um, I get such a thrill from watching things grow and the entire process. So it's not just the harvest, it's not the finished product, it's the entire seed to plate. So we've got two polytunnels. This is the lower one. I refer to them as the lower and the upper. And normally I plant tomatoes in here and some borlotti beans. But this year I thought I'd mix it up a bit and I've planted more beans for drying mainly and brassicas. And because there's no weed membrane underneath the um, compost here, I think the roots get right down into the earth and take up more nutrients. And I always feel that they do better here than they do in the upper tunnel, which has got uh, weed membrane. But I've got popping corn on this side and I just come along and I knock them to get the pollen to come down and 
pollinate everything, including myself. Well, I've got cucumbers back there in tubs and hopefully all of this Christmas is Brussels sprouts, but you can't see them because the beans are like taking over the world, it appears in here. My channel on YouTube is called So Grow and Cook, and I talk a little bit about what we're doing here on our small holding. Um, I show you what I'm growing, and I sometimes do recipes and cooking from the garden onto your plate and I try to keep things quite simple. It'd be great if you could join me on the channel and if you like it you can always subscribe and then you'll know what's coming up in future videos.